Hey everybody, this is my 55 gallon Garami tank and in this tank I have some floating water sprite you'll notice to the left there. Now over the years this water sprite has become oddly shaped and it's very twisted, it's got unusual growth to it and I've always chalked it up. Apparently we also have a slice of cucumber floating up there, no charge for the extra cucumber. But if you look at the branches themselves, this one right here in front of us is a perfect example. See how corkscrewed the stem and how twisted the little fronds are? And then of course you can see how spindly and almost lace-like the actual leaves are. That's not what this plant is supposed to look like. This plant is supposed to have big, broad, leafy green foliage on it. It's not supposed to have weird twisted stems or anything else. So I've always assumed it was some sort of nutrient deficiency and I always just kind of shrugged my shoulders and walked away. And in my own defense, I've never really worried about it because it's not causing me any problems and I've just never really put a whole lot of thought into it. I've just kind of saw it as one of those mysteries. It's got a nutrient deficiency. Don't really know that much about aquarium plants and so on and so forth. And I've never just really thought that much about it. Well, the other day, I was actually thinking about some of my other plants and I was thinking about rainwater in my potted plants outside and how I didn't need to worry about watering them because they had been watered by the rain. And I began wondering how long it would be before plants being watered with nothing but rainwater would start suffering from a cow mag deficiency or calcium magnesium deficiency since rainwater is basically distilled water. It has no hardness to it at all. And as soon as I thought that, a vision of that twisted water sprite popped into my head and I just started laughing at myself. It's just so obvious that it's a cow mag deficiency. My water is notorious for having no hardness to it. If you've watched my videos for any length of time, you know that my water has zero hardness. It has almost nothing coming out of the ground. It has, you know, it goes through a treatment that then removes any additional calcium or magnesium that might be in there, gets taken out. And then, of course, my other option is my RO water, which, you know, I take that water and then I strip it down even further so there's nothing in it. So for my planted plants, you know, my soil-based plants, I'm fully aware of, you know, adding calcium and magnesium to the... Um, uh, food mixture when I water them. I don't rely only on the um, primary nutrients. So here's how it breaks down. You've got three types of nutrients your plants need. You need your, your primary nutrients, which are your NPK numbers. You see them fairly regularly. Most people are familiar with your NPK numbers. N is the nitrogen, P is the phosphorus, and K is the potassium. I didn't make up the periodic table, so don't blame me for K being potassium, but K is indeed potassium. And most people know about that, and most people use a plant food that contains those. Your secondary nutrients that your plant needs are calcium, magnesium, and iron. And then you get down into your trace elements, which are boron, zinc, molybdenum, manganese, um, copper, there's all kinds of little tiny trace elements that your plants need very, very little of. But that's the key. They're no less important. You know, copper is no less important for your plants than nitrogen or phosphorus. The reason it's a trace mineral is because it only needs a trace amount of it. So your secondary elements like your um, calcium, your magnesium, and your iron are no less important for the plant's growth and development, but the plant simply needs less of it. And in most people's cases, you supply your plant with all the calcium, magnesium, and iron it needs just by giving it water. Most people have enough hardness in their water that those trace elements are, or those secondary elements, I should say, are supplied just by your water. If you've got, say, 10 degrees hardness, you've got nothing to worry about. You'd never need to use a cow mag supplement if you've got 10 or 12 degrees hardness in your water because you're supplying it with your water. 
So I decided just for good measure I would do a little bit of research and see what the interwebs had to say about it. And of course I went by gardening websites as opposed to aquarium websites. And when I you know, thought about it from the point of view of a gardener, it all just fell into place so readily and so easily. Um, you know, article after article talked about softened water and if you've got a well that has very soft water in it and blah, blah, blah. And that's why most people just don't think about calcium and magnesium as being something they need to add to their plants. If you've got city water, you've probably got enough added in there by the city in order to make your water palatable. You know, raw water, not necessarily raw water, I know that's a stupid craze right now of drinking untreated water, but when I say raw water, um, I mean pure water. Uh, raw was a very wrong way of saying that. Pure water, it's kind of harsh on the tongue, and when you start getting that pH down there really low, it can even have a little bit of a sour taste to it. So when you've got bottled water or filtered water, you'll often, if you read the label, you'll see where it says remineralized for taste or something to that effect. And your city water is no different. They mineralize that water. So you've got a little bit of calcium, a little bit of magnesium, a little bit of sodium. Um, you know, you've got those trace amounts of stuff in there that just, that's enough. Your plants get plenty. Mine, however, do not. I get none in any of my water. So my plants that are either attached to rocks or the planted substrate or pieces of wood in the tank they're actually drawing their minerals from other sources not the water itself my floating plants have no place to get their calcium magnesium or iron except for the water and there simply is none in it so if you think about it from an aquaculture point of view and if you think about this as a sort of we'll call it a pseudo aquaponic system i know this is not a true aquaponic system but for all intents and purposes we can think about it as an aquaponic system i'm getting my npk taken care of as far as all my trace minerals and stuff like that i'm not really having enough of an issue that i'm even worried about it and then my calcium and magnesium is where i'm having problems so I looked into some different things I could do. For one thing, I just checked out of curiosity. I took my CalMag supplement from the other room and I made up a batch of it in, you know, a gallon of water just like I would if I was, you know, feeding my plants. And I used my RO water this time rather than my tap water just so I knew I was starting with, you know, as soft as you can get it, zero degrees hardness. I added my CalMag solution and I checked and the water was 12 degrees hardness. So it added a significant amount of calcium, magnesium and iron to that water. And then I began thinking about adding some of that to the aquarium and what impact would that have. And then of course that's honestly that's what I thought first and that's why I checked the water hardness and when I saw how much it changed the water hardness. I thought, well, all right, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go messing with the tank. And then, of course, I realized, like, there's probably products for aquariums. And, and you know, that took five seconds of looking into that. And they make all kinds. Of, there's a product called Equilibrium by Seachem. Um, there's some general hardness adjusters out there. There's all sorts of things you can get if you've got an aquarium with very, very low mineralization in it and you want to boost your mineralization up. Now in this case, that brings me to this tank. I don't want to because I've got this little chocolate garami in here and they need very low mineralization. And then all the other fish in this tank seem to do okay in it. The only concern I had was when I added my whiptail catfish recently. I've never really had good luck with them in the past and I believe it's due to my very low mineralization in my water. So I have added some minor supplements to the tanks. Um, I've messed around with a few of them. This one I've actually had the most success by adding eggshells to it. And by putting the eggshells in there, I have increased the water's hardness from zero to about seven. So I did that just for the sake of increasing the mineralization in the water for the fish, not the plants. But I've got a floating water sprite in this tank and while this one's not as old as the other one it hasn't had as much time to suffer from calcium deficiency or you know cal mag deficiency look at the difference 
you know so this tank has seven degrees hardness and I've got eggshells dissolving into the water which is giving me calcium and magnesium and even sulfur and all sorts of other little odd trace elements that the plant needs and then of course my water sprite in this tank looks like that and we can even see it from the top and it looks very different so I'm sure that's what it is well we're not really getting a good look at it there you can kind of see how spindly and wiry that looks that's not how it's supposed to look at all and if we come over on the other side of the room here I got my autofocus off hang on half a second if we look at this one I can actually open the lid and leave it open this is another one that over time now that it's been in this tank for a while it's doing the exact same thing i'm getting that really strange twisted growth on the stems and it just doesn't look right it looks like this strange lace leaf plant if you look at my other one down on the other end of the tank same thing so i'm not going to worry about it i'm not going to start loading my tanks up with calcium and magnesium i'm going to continue doing what i've been doing which is to add either the, can't even think of what it's called now, poultry grit, which is crushed coral and oyster shells, and I'll put bags of that in the filters, and that'll dissolve slowly over time, and it'll give me a little bit of mineralization, and that's fine. That's all I'm trying to do. The reason I'm not going to bother with, <clears throat> excuse me, the other products the equilibrium or the um, you know GH up or any of those kind of products that you can use to increase the water hardness is for the same reason I don't put foods or furts or anything else in there for my tanks I just don't mess with it I'll forget to do it I don't do it regularly enough or I'll forget I did it and I'll add more and then I'll put too much in and I just I keep my tanks as simple and basic as possible if you can't survive in my tank the way it is then you don't belong in my tank and that's kind of my philosophy so with the water sprite I'm not worried about it I don't mind the way it looks it is growing funny but it still grows and over time if I am adding a little bit of mineralization maybe it'll start sorting itself out maybe it'll start getting more calcium and magnesium and it'll do better for itself and then, of course, if it dies off, I've got buckets full of the stuff in the other room. And I may set up a tank. Uh, I've got a quarantine tank in the other room that I have plants that I kind of use as a grow-out tank for plants. I may mess around with that tank a little bit with either my CalMag supplement or try home remedies like eggshells and stuff. Or maybe, um, if I get some extra money one day, I can go ahead and break down and buy some of that other product and I can start experimenting with that and see what that does to my water hardness and total dissolved solids and so on and so forth. But, you know, again, I'm not going to go out and spend money on something, uh, just for the sake of experimenting with it. If I don't actually have a need for it or plan on using it. So there you go. There was my long winded explanation of how I figured out that I'm just suffering from a simple cow mag deficiency in my water Sprite. But it all came together for me, and I'm sure that's what it is at this point. So make sure you're subscribed, and you won't miss any more of my grand revelations when I figure stuff out. Uh, don't forget this one here is my 125-gallon tank. And then, of course, the tank we started by looking at was my Garami tank. So thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful to somebody. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you real soon on the next one.